Do something different the next 90 days than you did the last 90 days, like picking up the books to read. Do something different like the new health disciplines, relationship with your family, whatever it is, doesn't matter how small it is. If you'll start doing different things with the same circumstances, since we cannot change the circumstances, but we can change ourselves. We can change what we do. And then he gave me another secret to success when he said, what you have at the moment, Mr. Rohn, you've attracted by the person you've become. What you have at the moment, you've attracted by the person you've become. Few little simple principles here. Once you understand these, it starts to explain so much. Now, sometimes it's a little tough to take, blaming yourself instead of the marketplace taking responsibility instead of putting it off on someone else. Those, that transition sometimes is a challenging mission. And this one was a little tough for me. She said, here's the secret, Mr. Rohn. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Once I got that, it turned my life around. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. He said, if you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. If you would have known me at age 25, you would have said, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. If you'd have known me, you'd have said that. I'm the guy, I don't mind coming a little bit early, staying a little bit late. I don't mind that. You'd have said, well, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. You say, well, how come he's got pennies in his pocket, and nothing in the bank and behind on his promises? Well, I was a hard worker, but I was working hard on my job, not on my self. I'm telling you, if you'll learn that simple little principle and start the process today, latest tomorrow, I'll give you tonight to think it over. <laughs> and start this whole process of personal development, work on yourself, make yourself more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, you can so dynamically change your income and economics is the least of the values that you can start earning in terms of equity if you'll start working harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work hard on yourself and develop the skills. Work hard on yourself and develop the graces. All of the stuff necessary to become more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, your whole life can explode into change. Promotions, no problem. Becoming more valuable to the company, I'm telling you, no problem. Money, no problem. Economics, no problem. Future, no problem. If you just go to work on the right thing. Not get things out there to change. Don't try to change the seed. Don't change the soil. Don't change the sunshine. Don't change the rain. Don't change the mix of seasons. Let the miracle of everything that's available work for you and start working on the inside. Work on your philosophy. Work on your attitude. Work on your personality. Work on your language. Work on the gift of communication. Work on all of your abilities. And if you'll start making those personal changes, I'm telling you, everything will change for you. Success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue, chase, run after. Success is something you develop, something you become. You attract success. So the whole key to unlock all the treasures, whether it's economic treasures or spiritual treasures, financial, social, personal, every way you can possibly think of is by your own personal development. And then he added one more, which is so important, and it's probably worth the price of the seminar. Here it is. What you become is much more valuable than what you get. What you become is much more valuable than what you get. The major question to ask on the job is not what am I getting here, the major question to ask on the job is, what am I becoming here? Not what am I getting, what am I becoming? So it's very important what you become. Because what you become attracts. If you become cynical, you attract cynicism. What you become attracts. So this whole subject of personal development was so vitally important to me. It changed my life. I was a millionaire by age 31. And that was just the economic part of it. it. Took me six years from age 25 to age 31. It was unbelievable.
Mr. Schoff, over a five-year period before he died at age 49, who taught me some extraordinarily simple things. He only went to the ninth grade in school, never finished high school, never went to college, never went to university. So he put his ideas and his experiences in very simple language, which I think for me, you know, a kid from the farms of Idaho, that simplicity was so important. Because if it would have been technical, I'd have missed it. If it would have been mystic, I, you know, I would have, you know, backed away. But it was just basic, blunt, ABC, familiar stuff that I hadn't thought of before. And he did start to remind me, and those ideas changed my life. Mr. Schof was the one when I said, you know, this is all they pay. He said, you've been working six years, Mr. Owen. How come you're not doing better? And I said, this is all the company pays. He says, well, that's not true. I said, no, this is my paycheck. This is all the company pays. He said, no, this is all the company pays you. I thought, <laughs> that's a new way to look at it, right? He said, doesn't the company pay two, three, four, five times this amount to other people? I said, well, yes. He said, well, then this is not all the company pays. It's all they pay you. And if you qualified, wouldn't your income grow two, three, four, five times? I said, I suppose. So he said, we don't have to work on the company. We have to work on you. See, that was the beginning of what he called the phrase personal development. I told him things cost too much. He said, no, you can't afford them. I thought, well, that's a new concept. I hadn't thought about that. You know, we put some of the valuable things on the high shelf. So you can't get to them until you qualify. If you want the things on the higher shelf, you've got to stand on the books you read. Every book you read, you get to stand a little higher so you can get the things on the higher shelf. See, I learned those concepts. It was so incredible. And here was the most important one. Success is something you attract by the person you become. See, that phrase changed my life. Success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue. It's like chasing a butterfly. You can't quite catch it. Success is something you attract by becoming an attractive person. See, those were new concepts to me. I'm just working hard trying to make a living. Here's what he said to me. This changed my life. I got a chance to teach this in Moscow and across Russia. Three visits, now the fourth. Here's what Shof taught me. Profits are better than wages. Nobody taught me that in high school. Nobody taught me that. I went to one year of college. Nobody taught me. Profits are better than wages. Wages make you a living. Profits make you a fortune. And how could you work on both a living and a fortune? He said, well, you could start part-time working on your fortune while you're working full-time on your living. I thought, wow. Now he said it's fun to get up in the morning. Not just getting up, go to work to pay the rent. But to get up to go to work to make a fortune. First to make a living for my family. Second to make a fortune. And he taught me how to make both a living and a fortune. Guess what I did? I learned how to make both a living and a fortune. And I found out anybody could do it once they get the information. And at age 25, I started receiving this extraordinary information. Here's what he said. Your income is directly related to your philosophy, not to the economy. I thought no one ever told me that. I kept hoping the economy would change. He said, no, your philosophy has to change. I assured him that I had my fingers crossed. He said, that won't help. Then what could I do to change my income and multiply it by two, by three, by five, by ten, and then multiply it by ten again? What could I do? And he started giving me the disciplines and the process of learning the skills to change my life. This was an extraordinary man. Those were extraordinary times for me. Life-changing in every manner that you can imagine. But very simple ABC concepts. Here's what I learned. Not to search for the exotic until you've discovered the basic. And those basic philosophies that he shared with me during that time were life-changing. Now, if you're excited and you're ready to change, 
Let me give you three steps to start life change that can change your life, your personality, your lifestyle, everything can change. Here's the steps. Number one, find out how things work. The first key to doing better is find out. To change your life, really, you need ideas. There isn't anything an idea can't change. And Shof taught me the major problem is lack of an idea, not a problem. At first, I didn't have any money. I said to Mr. Shof, I don't have any money. He said, that's not a problem. Now, see, up until then, I always thought it was. <laughs> right? I was confused. He said, no, no, the problem is lack of an idea on how to create money and wealth. It isn't lack of money, it's lack of ideas. So if you get the ideas, see, you can change anything. Now, to get ideas, you need a constant study of finding out. Now, Shof also said, when you find out something that works, put the information in your journal. Don't use your head for a filing cabinet. Put it in your journal so that you can do the next best thing. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Go over it. And if you repeat it, go over it, sure enough, someday, some mysterious day, the idea takes root, starts to grow, and shows up in your bank account, and your dress, and your personality, and your lifestyle. But capture the ideas in your journal. Find out how things work. Shof gave me this word for my life change. He said, study. Great word. If you wish to be successful, study success. If you wish to be happy, study happiness. If you wish to be wealthy, study wealth. Don't leave it to chance. Make it a study. Some people just go through the day with their fingers crossed. See, that won't do it. You've got to study the things that can change your economic, social, spiritual, personal life. Now, here's a qualifying phrase. And we'll have several of these qualifying phrases throughout the seminar. Here's the first one. You may not be able to do all you find out. I understand that. You may not be able to do all you find out, but you should find out all you can do. See, you don't want to wind up at the end of your life and discover that you've lived only one-tenth of it. And the other nine-tenths went down the drain, not for lack of opportunity, for lack of information. So that's number one, find out how things work. Now, here's the best human virtue for finding out, curiosity. Make a note of that. Curiosity. Be curious. You might add a word to it that'll help. Childish curiosity. What will kids do if they want to know something bad enough? Bug you. That's the phrase. They can ask a thousand questions. You think they're through? They got another thousand. They'll drive you to the brink. It's a virtue. When you got to know, be like a child. Now, if you're curious, let me give you three ways to find out how to change anything, any life direction, any dimension. Here's three ways to find out how to change anything. Number one is to read. Become a good reader. All of the successful people I know and work with around the world, they're all good readers. Curiosity drives them to read. They got to know. They just read, 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 read. Become a good reader. Now, that's my opinion. Listen to the other lecturers and listen to me and make up your own mind. Don't be a follower. Be a student. Okay? I say, really, for life change, you got to read. One way to learn is from your own experiences, but another way to learn is from other people's experiences. See, one book might save you five years if you read it. Did you know there's books on how to be stronger, more decisive, be a speaker, be a leader, have a better effect on other people, develop your personality. Did you know there's books on that and people don't read them? How would you explain that? 
and they can read. Did you know that hundreds of successful people have written their stories in books and they wrote down how they did it and people don't read it? How would you explain that? The guy's busy, I guess. You know, you get tied up. The guy says, well, yeah, you work where I work, but the time you struggle home, it's late. You got to eat a bite of supper, watch a little TV, get to bed. You can't sit up half the night reading, 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 reading. And the guy's behind on his car payment. Good worker, hard worker, sincere. But you got to be better than sincere and work hard. Otherwise, at the end of your life, you'll wind up cold, stony broke. You got to be better than a good worker. You got to be a good reader. My opinion. Now, you don't have to read half the night, okay? Although if you're broke, that's not a bad place to start, right? <laughs> Get on with the cure. But put this in your notes, 30 minutes a day. Just devote 30 minutes a day to reading. Stretch it to an hour if you can, but at least 30 minutes. 30 minutes a day, read something positive, something challenging, something inspirational, something instructional, at least 30 minutes a day. And here's the next clue. Every day, don't miss. Once you set this up, just don't miss. Miss a meal, but not your 30 minutes. Because you can get along without some meals, but you can't get along without some books. There's a Bible phrase that says humans cannot live on bread alone or just food. It says the next most important thing to food is words. Words nourish the mind, makes us different than animals and dogs. Words nourish the soul. So humans have to have food and words in order to be happy and healthy. I told my staff the other day, some people read so little, they've got rickets of the mind. They're undernourished mentally. So to get a good diet of words, I suggest good reading habits, 30 minutes a day. Now, some people don't read because they don't read well. I understand that. And the national average is fairly poor. People have fairly poor reading skills. They're still trying to operate on awkward old skills of the past, right? Reading one word at a time. And with such poor skills, when you read, the mind usually wanders. Because you can think about a lot of things. The mind is an incredible mechanism. And if you read poorly, the mind wanders around thinking of other things while you're trying to read. Did you ever read a page and wonder what it said? Right? Say, I got to read that again. Right? That's because the mind is just doing this job, right? Just wandering around. Did you ever read yourself to sleep? See, that's another problem. The mind says, who needs this? Just shuts off, right? Poor skills. Or a guy looks at a book, 500 pages, and says, no use starting, right? I mean, I'd never get through this one. Anyway, in our weekend seminar, we take a whole section, about two, three hours, and we go through reading skills. How to read a book a day is the title of that subject. And I'll tell you what, if you can read a book a day, it'll change your whole life. I mean, a book a day will change your whole life. Expose yourself to a whole variety of things, spiritual, moral, personal, economic, history, geography, everything. I mean, you can really change if you read a book a day. So you might want to attend the weekend, get in on those reading class skills. It's incredible. A book a day will change your life. But hey, whether you read slow or fast, or whether you read awkwardly, or whether you read well, here's the key. Read. Don't miss. Here's what reading is. Reading is tapping the treasure of ideas. That's what reading is, tapping the treasure of ideas. And ideas can change any part of your life. And if you've got a good excuse not to tap the treasure of ideas at least 30 minutes a day, or spend the money and get the books, I'd love to hear it. Some people have excuses you wouldn't believe. I say, John, look, I got this gold mine. I got so much gold, I don't know what to do with it all. Come on over and dig, John says. I ain't got a shovel. 
I say, well, John, get you one. He says, you know what they want for shovels? <laughs> Let me give you the two books that started my library 20, at age 25. My library now is worth many, many, many thousands of dollars, but it started with two books. Mr. Shof recommended these to me, got me started. Shof said, become self-educated. He said, standard education will get you standard results. And you can check those numbers and see if that's what you want. But if you want to go beyond that, you now have got to become self-educated. So he got me started on my library. He said, one of the ways is build your library. Now I had a Bible, right? That was 66 books. So that's a pretty good deal. But here's what else he recommended. He said, number one, get the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Think and Grow Rich, if you don't already have it. The title should intrigue you. Think and Grow Rich. I found that book in a secondhand bookstore. I paid 47 cents for it. I've still got it. It's one of the rare hardback covers. I read it several dozen times. Shof taught me repetition is the mother of skill. Some of the ideas in that book helped to change my life. As I look back on it now, the book was worth several hundred thousand dollars and I bought it for 47 cents. What a lesson I learned, the difference between cost and value. Before I met Mr. Shelf, I used to ask, how much does it cost? After I met Mr. Shelf, I asked, how much is it worth? I started basing my life on worth instead of cost and everything changed. But that was book one, Think and Grow Rich. The second book he recommended I get was a book on nutrition. Shelf said, study nutrition. I think that first book was by Adele Davis. Eat right to keep fit, I think. I've got lots of them now, but I think that was the first one. Shelf said study nutrition, and there's all kinds of books on nutrition, just read them all. Some are a little weird, but, but read them all. Right? If you're weird, do the weird stuff. I mean, whatever. But read them, then make up your own mind. Remember, don't read and become a follower. Read and become a student. Make up your mind, find a plan that works good for you, but get the books on nutrition. Here's what Mr. Shove said to me. Vitality plays an important part in doing well. Vitality. He said some people don't do well because they don't feel well. It's not that they're not intelligent. It's that they're ill. They don't have the zing and the fire and the vitality to do well. So he put it right on me about studying nutrition. He said, Jim, you wouldn't believe it. He said, I got this friend of mine raises racehorses. The guy's got nine books on how to feed horses. He does not have a book on how to feed himself. He said, my friend studies horse nutrition, studies it. Vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, protein, amino acids, carbohydrates, fats, enzymes, proper balance for his horses, Shof said. He's a fanatic. And he said, you ought to see his horses. They're magnificent, beautiful, powerful animals. They can run like the wind. And he said, you ought to see him. He's a wreck. <laughs> he said, the guy feeds his horses better than he feeds himself. Do you believe that? In my later studies, I discovered some people feed their dogs better than they feed their kids. If you can believe that. Anyway, I didn't mean to give you a health lecture here tonight, okay? But hey, take care of yourself. Work on that part because it's one of the answers to doing well. There's even a Bible phrase that says, many times the spirit is willing, but the body's weak. Now see you're in trouble. And that is a problem. You wake up in the morning and the mind says, let's go get them. And the body says, I can't even get out of bed. <laughs> so you got to work on both sides of this, right? Okay. But get your library started. Get the books. Put it together. Books are the trademark of civilization. 
it's fascinating to walk into someone's home and browse through their library because your library says something about you. So put your reading together. Very important. Here's the second way to find out how to change your life. And that's to listen. Get around successful people and listen. Now you can also learn from unsuccessful people. Take notes on both. Negative and positive. On the negative, the notes are called what not to do. And you got to learn what not to do as well as what to do. So learn from the negative as well as the positive. Okay. Find out what poor people read and don't read it. Right? That's good information. Learn from the negative. But now you can also learn from the positive. Get around successful people. Listen to what they say. Listen to how they say it. It's important. We've all got about 16 waking hours. Practice listening those 16 hours. And I say practice listening because listening isn't easy. I found out it's easier to talk than it is to listen. But if you will practice listening the 16 hours you're awake, sure enough, from surprising sources comes great ideas. In sales training, we teach, if you want to learn sales, listen to the kids. Kids have got to be the master salespeople of all time. They have no equal. Father tells his young son, no, you cannot have an ice cream cone. 30 minutes later, he's licking on one. <laughs> That'd be 30 minutes worth listening to. They got moves you wouldn't believe. Persistence runs deep like the ocean. And the kids never took a class on how to overcome objections. They already know how. They don't need classes. So listen and learn. Now, here's some of the best advice I've got for the whole evening. It won't get any better than this. This is it. Poor people ought to take rich people out to dinner and listen. That's some of the best I got. <laughs> if a guy's not doing well, one of the first things he ought to do is find a guy that is doing well and offer to buy him his dinner. Spend 50, 60, 80, 100 dollars. Go for the full nine course. Start him on the juices and hors d'oeuvres. Get him started talking. The salad takes 15 minutes. Keep it rolling. Biggest steak in town takes 45. Keep it rolling. Pour on the dessert. Stretch that meal out about two hours. If you get a successful person to eat and talk for two hours, they're liable to drop ideas in your lap, change your life. Multiply your income by two, by three, by five. But you're right. Poor people don't usually take rich people out to dinner. That's the problem. The guy said he's rich, let him buy his own dinner. I'm not coming up with any money. <laughs> and he says, besides, you work where I work. By the time you struggle home, it's late. You're lucky to get your own supper, let alone running around trying to find a rich man to feed. <laughs> and the guy's behind on his house payment. Good worker, hard worker, sincere. But you got to be better than sincere, work hard. You wind up broke. You got to be better than a good worker. You got to be a good listener. And remember what you read and what you hear, put the good stuff in your journal. Now here's the third way to find out how to change your life. And that's to observe. You can pick up a lot of ideas just by watching. Get around successful people and watch. Here's why. Success leaves clues. Watch how the man shakes hands. Watch how the lady responds. People who do well do certain things over and over and over and over. And if you're clever, you can pick them up. Watch it all. If a guy's making $10,000 a month, I'd watch how he walks. Maybe that's it. <laughs> Copy his funny little walk. Somebody says, well, that's kind of a silly walk. Say, it's 10,000. <laughs> I haven't got the money yet, but I got the walk. <laughs> it's bound to start somewhere. 
What I ask you tonight is to be unusual and be a good observer of what's going on. You can pick up ideas that can change your life starting tomorrow. Just be a more careful observer. Now remember, there's two ways to see. One is called sight. See with your eyes. The other one is called insight. See with your mind. See with your eyes, you'll see things. See with your mind, you'll see answers. Put your eyes and your mind to work. And the best advice on developing sight and insight is pay attention. Don't miss anything. In the weekend seminar we teach, one of the greatest fatalities to success is preoccupation, lack of concentration. The guy's mind wanders. See, you wind up average. You've got to learn to zero in and concentrate. I read a good article one time, Reader's Digest. The title was, Wherever You Are, Be There. Excellent. Don't miss anything. Now, we've lingered a little bit long on number one here for personal development. Find out how things work, but it's so very important finding out. And I've given you three ways to find out. Now, here's the second step to personal development. Okay, number one was find out how things work. Here's number two, go to work. You must now take action on what you found out. In doing business around the world, we call it game plan. Put together your game plan. One of the major things we teach on the weekend seminars, game plans. How to game plan your office. If you're in sales, you need a game plan. Kids need a game plan. You need a home game plan, social game plan, a business game plan. Everybody needs game plans. Financial independence, game plan. Your investment, game plan. Don't think in your head, put it on paper. Don't operate out of your mind, operate from paper. I often ask somebody, what are you gonna do the next six months? And somebody starts to tell me, I say, no, don't tell me, show me. Show me your game plan for the next six months. Then I can look at things and maybe I can help. But you got to operate from paper. Put it on a game plan, take action on what you found out. Now here's the best word I know of to go with action. Massive. See, that'll change everything. Massive action is called the cure-all. If you're going to make calls, make a few thousand. If you're going to make contacts, make a few thousand. If you're going to knock on doors, knock on a few thousand. See, that'll change everything. Here's the language of the poor. I'll try it a time or two and see what happens. It's the way poor people talk. The guy says, well, I'll give it 30 days. 30 days, you could guess his bank balance. You've got to have a better game plan. So here's one of the major things to do starting tomorrow. Take a look at your game plan. If it isn't loaded with massive action, change it tomorrow. Action. The formula really works like this. Pick up a good idea, take heavy action. Pick up a couple of good ideas, take heavy action. That's the formula for sex, success. Heavy action. <laughs> It's a good thing we can edit all this, right? <laughs> the formula for success, take heavy action on a good idea, right? That's the ratio. Now here's the key. Don't wait till you've learned two or 3,000 things because that way you'll use up all the time and you could wind up smart and broke. And hey, it's okay to be dumb and broke. But if a guy's smart and broke, that's pitiful. Don't let your learning lead to knowledge. You'll become a fool. Let your learning lead to action. You can become wealthy. And there's many kinds of wealth. I understand that. Not just money. Money's one of the least of all values. I know some people with a lot of money that are very poor. 
Evita sings, as for fortune and as for fame, they are illusions. They're not the solutions they promise to be. So there's all kinds of wealth, but to get a big share coming your way, you've got to have a heavy action game plan. Now here's the third step to personal development and we'll wrap up personal development. Step number three, it's just a little caution and all through life we need little cautions. This one simply says, don't try to beat the system. Find out how it works, work it, but don't try to beat it. Some people learn just enough to start slicing it, shading it, thinning it, cutting corners, and looking for cheap answers. See, don't fall for that. You'll wind up with a cheap life. Find out how it works best and do it that way. Even though it seems to take a little longer, do it right. Don't compromise with right. Now under this step, here's another key. Be a quick learner. Don't let it take long to teach you. Learn quick. Don't run at the wall too many times. Learn quicker. One guy said he broke his nose seven times in the same place. Somebody says, looks like you'd stay out of that place. <laughs> Learn quicker. Now the third point here is don't be stubborn. See, some people won't change even when a better way comes. They say, well, I've been doing it this way 30 years. Hey, be ready for change. If it's a better way, go for it. But don't try to beat it. Or you'll be like the guy that went to Las Vegas. He didn't have much money. So he didn't want to risk his money gambling, but he gets to Las Vegas and the jackpot bells are ringing, the money's flowing, the lights are flashing, and he can't help himself. He's got to gamble. But instead of gambling with his cash, he decides to play the mon mental gambling game. And the brilliant scheme he worked out goes like this. He'd pick a number like number three. Mentally, he would bet a certain amount of money on the number. And whether it won or lost, he would jump.